Hey everybody, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking Kitchen tonight. Uh, obviously we're not in the kitchen. Obviously we're filming on top of a table and we're looking at a knife. We are looking at a bushcraft knife. I'm not going to be cooking tonight because as many of you know, I've been on a six month journey trying to sell my home and buy another nicer, bigger home and that all fell through. So. Yesterday, I moved back into my very first home. I moved back into my very first home for a second time. And the lesson I learned is to appreciate that for which I have. So I'm just going to continue living where I'm living and keep on upgrading it. And if the opportunity comes by again one day to have a bigger and better house, I will attempt to do so. But for right now, I'm happy where I'm at. The place is an utter wreck. Uh, it looks like a Claymore went off in it and it's going to take me a week or two to get unpacked and settled in and then it's going to be back to cooking for you. But tonight, tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about bushcraft knives. I'm going to show you roughly six knives. It might be a rather long video, but I promise it'll be worth it because then I'm going to be taking a pot shot at one of the biggest manufacturers of cutlery in the United States. So let's start off with a bushcraft knife. This is a bushcraft knife. This is a Mora. This is an FT-11750. They call it a craft line. Okay. It uses high quality carbon steel right out of Sweden. All right. I don't like the stainless ones. All right. Bush crafting to me is all about carbon steel. This uses a premium grade carbon steel. It's easy to spark fire with it. All you need is a piece of basalt rock and you're good to go. All right. So we got the premium carbon steel. We have a double injection molded handle. All right. It has an excellent, excellent traction and feel in the hand. It will not slip. And if you've seen other videos on YouTube, you see that for about $20, these Mora knives are some of the toughest knives you can get in the field for the money. And if you lose it, you just go buy another one. Okay. Um, this craft line is a slightly larger version of the standard Mora knives. It incorporates a much thicker blade all right, with a lot more refinement than your standard thickness Mora. Uh, it's a little bit thicker all the way around with, with the standard models and it comes with this injection molded sheath clicks in it won't shake out okay it's just a beautiful knife for 20 bucks okay so let's take a look at some of the specs of what a bushcraft knife really is all right it's black and gray obviously has a four inch blade 102 millimeters it's a high carbon stainless rock weld between 59 and 60 the blade thickness is 3.2 millimeters. The blade length, total length of this entire knife is 8.9 inches or 225 millimeters. Handle is rubber. The weight, 4.6 ounces or 130 grams. The price, depending on where you get it, between 15 and 25 dollars. Uh, what a lot of folks don't get about carbon steel, uh, and a lot of people need to catch up on, is that this steel is not stainless. It will patina and the patina is not the bad thing the patina is what saves a knife from rusting as long as you keep it dry now, contrary to popular belief a lot of people think that the patina is the beginning of rust on a carbon steel knife and that's just not the case the patina adds a layer of corrosion resistance to the knife and there are many ways to start a patina a lot of people stick a carbon steel knife into a potato uh, that's kind of old school I don't like doing that some people stick the blade into a cup of white vinegar. That'll patina a knife really fast. I don't like that, okay? I happen to like, if I want to patina this knife, if I want to carbonize this knife early before going out into the field, then I apply a couple of layers of Birchwood Casey Cold Blue. I wipe the blade with alcohol to make sure all the grit and dirt and grease, whatever's on there, is absolutely gone, and I let the alcohol dry on it. Right? Then I get a cotton swab, a cotton ball, and dip it in the birchwood casey, and I apply a couple of layers all the way around, and I let the blade blue to the blueness I want it to patina, I want it to carbonize and turn blue to the darkness that I desire, and then I'm good to go. Now, once the blade has been patinaed with the birchwood casey, I let it sit overnight, and then I give the blade a good rubbing with a piece of old t-shirt and some gun oil, and we're ready to go. The knife is patinaed. This is a great knife. The Scandinavians know exactly what they're doing. Okay, the best thing I can tell you, rule number one when using carbon steel or any kind of steel, when you are done, 
wash the blade with fresh water and make sure it is dry, 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 dry. Okay. The Mora knives are made in a city called Ostknor, Sweden. They've been making them for about a hundred years. These knives used to be made by every local craftsman in the country of Sweden, which was just about everybody. The company was formally formed in 2005 as a merger between a company called Frost's Knife and & Brink and the KJ Ericsson Company, and now it's, it's Mora, and it's a 100% Swedish made knife, and this is what a bushcrafting knife looks like. Now, here's another knife that's called a bushcraft knife, although I don't quite agree with it. This is the Benchmade. This is the Benchmade BM162 Bushcrafter, manufactured by Benchmade, designed by a custom knife maker by the name of Shane Siebert. All right, it is obviously a fixed blade. Benchmade's designation is for bushcrafting and camping. It's a drop point blade. The blade is made out of CPM S30V, or Crucible Particle Metallurgy S30V, and it's Rockwell between 58 and 60. All right, the grips are Benchmade's custom blended green G10 compressed fiberglass. It's been sandblasted and contoured. It's a really nice grip. They kind of contour the grip in the fashion of famous knife maker Bob Loveless. This kind of contouring is all about Bob Loveless. He invented it. He's the master. The scabbard, full grain leather. Okay, uses a belt loop. Okay, it also uses a happy camper D-ring. That's what I like to call them anyway. And um, it has a fire steel holder right here. You know, the grips, the grips are held in place by pressed titanium handle tubes with red spacers. If you can see the spacers between the blade and the handle, very well made knife. A very well made knife. The blade length is 4.4 inches or 11.8 centimeters. The blade thickness is 0.164 inches or 4.17 millimeters. The handle thickness on the model 162 Bushcrafter is 0.92 inches or 23.37 millimeters and the sheath's weight is 2.7 ounces or 76.54 The grams. weight of the knife itself is 7.72 The weight ounces. of the knife itself is 7.72 ounces or 218.86 grams. But yet again I come back to the word Bushcraft. Now Benchmade manufactures this knife, as I said, and it was designed by Shane Siebert, and it's a wonderful knife. The only problem this knife has as a bushcrafting knife is, in my opinion, it is made out of CPM S30V, and that is the wrong kind of steel for a bushcrafting knife. And in, in, my, in my opinion, S30V is the wrong kind of steel for any outdoor knife, uh, whether it be a hunter, a skinner, uh, even an outdoor tactical. When you're outdoors, Okay, in my opinion, when you're outdoors, the only kind of steels that should be used are carbon steels. All right, any kind of carbon steel. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's carbon. That's, that's my opinion, okay. This is a wonderful tactical knife if you want to use it for police and military. I don't have a problem with S30V, but uh, out in the field, S30V, in my humble opinion, is the wrong steel because in an emergency, you can barely get S30V to spark to make a fire, whereas carbon is all about making fire with a piece of basalt rock or fire steel. But in my opinion, S30V, no. wrong choice. Once again, back on the issue of bushcrafting, this knife in front of you is an exact duplicate of the Benchmade Model 162 Bushcrafter. They call this one the Benchmade Model 162-1 Bushcrafter EOD. Do you guys know what EOD is? And it's not EOD. Do you know what EOD is? How many of you out there know what EOD is? How many of you have been in the Navy? Right. EOD stands for Explosives Ordnance Disposal. It's a team of technicians that are tasked with dealing with high explosives. This is Benchmade's model, 162-1 Bushcrafter EOD, Explosives Ordnance Disposal Knife. Ooh, I'm impressed. Okay, basically Benchmade's designation for it is camping, bushcraft, and uh oh, military, military. Hmm, I really begin to wonder about that. The blade is fixed, naturally, just as the regular 162. It is a drop point blade. Both of them incorporate the high flat grind. Both of them are using CPM S30V Rockwell at 5860. In this case, the G10 is their custom blend of Coyote Tan, compressed fiberglass handle, 
held in place by expanded titanium tubes. Okay, it also incorporates spacers. Actually, this knife doesn't have spacers. The other one has spacers. I thought this one had spacers between the grip and the knife, but it doesn't. And that's okay. The scabbard for this knife is Kydex. Ooh, Kydex. The blade is 4.4 inches or 11.8 centimeter. Blade thickness 0.164 inches, 4.17 millimeter. Overall length 9.15 or 23.24 centimeters. Weight 7.72 ounces or 218.86 grams. Handle thickness as with the other knife. 0.92 inches or 28.37 millimeters. Sheath weight 1.86 ounces or 52.73 grams. Ooh. But the bone that I'm about to pick, the pot shot that I'm taking at Benchmade Knives, the pot shot that I'm taking at Shane Siebert is, they call it an EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal Knife. But I don't see a stamp for it. Oh, wait. Wait, I don't see a stamp for it. Actually, yes, yes, I do. Right here in Benchmade's catalog, there's a stamp for the for the crabs right there. Okay, the EOD. Okay, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technicians. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is, right there. That's just the basic crab stamp. All right, that's the basic. You have basic, intermediate, and master crabs in the Navy, and this knife comes with a stamp of a basic crab in the catalog, but nothing on the tool itself. Okay, on the back it just says Seabert Design, but this is an EOD knife. Where's the mark for it? Okay, so the pot shot I'm taking, okay, the pot shot I'm taking at Les the Asus, the owner of Benchmade, the pot shot I'm taking at Shane Seabert is prove to me that this knife is being used by the Navy EOD. Okay, prove it. Okay, this is a good survival knife, but Prove to me, show me who endorses this knife in the EOD. Who carries this knife in the EOD service? Whom is it that you, Benchmade, or you, Shane Siebert, has worked with to perfect this knife to even be able to say it's an EOD knife? Well, I'm waiting for your answer. You know, even in Benchmade's catalog, they say this knife works with the with the world's foremost explosives technicians, the EOD. And then in the catalog it says, ooh, start a signal fire or cut some C4. It's your call. You know what? I call it balderdash. That's right. I call it balderdash. I call it buffalo muffins. Okay, Shane Siebert designed this knife with the EOD in mind. Balderdash, show me. Show me. Am I mad? Yes, because this is manufacturer bullcrap. Okay, prove to me. Who in EOD service? What basic crab? What master crab? What crab of any kind has worked with you to endorse this knife, to carry this knife? Okay? Nobody, in my opinion. That's who. First off, as a bushcraft military blade, in my opinion, Les the Aces and, Sh and Shane Siebert made a big mistake. They once again picked S30V for this field knife. And S30V is the wrong kind of steel to have in a tactical field knife camping field knife, anything in the field. It has to be carbon and not stainless. And I can roll off carbon all day long. 1095, 1075, 1050, 1055, D2, A2, O1, 52100, 5160, Aogami, carbon 5, chrome vanadium, 1084, 1070, 1060, M2, M4, Infi, Infi is actually 5200. Any of those carbon steels are much better than CPM S30V in the field for a bushcraft field tactical knife. Any of them. So as I stated earlier, the CPM S30V is not my first choice in a blade steel. And as I also stated, Mr. Deasis and Mr. Shane Siebert need to prove to me, show me, who's endorsing this knife in the EOD service. Who's carrying it, who's wearing it, who's using it. All right. I don't think anybody in the EOD service is carrying this knife. All right. That is my opinion. I don't think anyone, basic crab, intermediate crab, or master crab, I don't think any of them are carrying the 162-1 EOD bushcraft by Benchmade. I just don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is because I have it on good opinion that a vast majority of EOD operators don't like stainless and they don't like Kydex. They prefer carbon steel and they prefer leather scabbards. And I can prove it. So, how do I know, you ask, what kind of knife the EOD service likes to carry? Okay, 
How do I know that the EOD Master Crabs prefer a leather scabbard over Kydex? How do I know that the EOD prefers carbon steel over stainless? How do I, Richard Blaine, know this? Well, because I have a friend named Rick Polari of Polari Knives, okay? And he's made close to a hundred of these knives right here. This is Rick Polari's EOD Master Crab Utility Knife. This knife is made for true EOD operators. How do I know this? Because he's made almost a hundred. He's collaborated with them with the design. He's, his knives are endorsed by them. They love this knife. The Rick Polari EOD Master Crab. Okay. Here it is. Look at it. It's beautiful. Oh, and by the way, if you could see that stamp right there, that stamp in the blade, that is the stamp of a Master Crab. Not a basic crab. That is the stamp of the Master Crab. All right. Let me give you some specs on this knife, okay? So you can see it. Camera. All right. This is a full flat grind. It's 52100 carbon steel. It's heat treated with the Peters heat treat method. It rockwells between 59 and 61. The blade is 3 16 thick, green linen micarta, okay? Being held together with Corby brass bolts and the seal of the EOD Master Crab. It is just about one pound in weight. I mean, just look at this knife. I mean, just look at this knife. It is built for action. Look at how thick that puppy is. Right, and right there, if you can see it, Rick's, <laughs> with the lighting, Rick's name is stamped in there. Just, just look at this knife. It is, it is buffed, okay? This is what an EOD Master Crab is using for their utility knife these days. This is one of the early ones in a full flat grind, all right? There are other models that have been made There we go. This is an EOD Master Crab, and uh, it doesn't have the stamp because actually this model has become the standard Navy SEAL utility knife. Only the ones stamped with the seal of the Master Crab will be Master Crab utility knives. This is the same knife, except it doesn't have the seal, and it incorporates a hollow grind rather than the full flat grind. Once again, this is 52100 carbon steel. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, green linen micarta, Corby brass bolts, one pound in weight, heat treated using the Peters heat treat method, rock weld between 59 and 61, has a little bit of an acid etch on the flat. This model is made for the seals, and yes, there are seals in active duty today using Polari knives, using this knife, using carbon steel, using leather scabbards. Okay, not going for any of this Benchmade bull. We're in the manufacturer bull going, this is the knife used by the SEALs, or this is the knife used by the Green Beret. This is first hand, guys, all right? My buddy Rick has been making these for quite some time for these guys. Real operators, this is the real deal. There's a new design coming for the Master Crab knife, because once again, he has collaborated with him on the design, and here's an unfinished one, okay? This is the new EOD Master Crab, and it will get the stamp, all right? This one is same as everything else, okay? It's 5200 carbon, 3 16th inch thick. It'll have the green linen micarta, the Corby bolts, one pound in weight. Treated with the Peters heat treat method, Rockwell 5961. Uh, it'll have some patina left on it. It will be made for the EOD Master Crabs, but instead of using the hollow grind or the flat grind, the EOD Master Crabs have decided to go with a Scandi grind. Their choice, man. Their choice. This Scandi grind is ground between 11 to 13 degrees. It's what the EODs want. There you go. It is what they want. It is what they are going to get. This is the newest iteration. It's unfinished. When it's finished, I'll probably do a review on this as well. But the Scandi grind is what they prefer. Okay, everything else is going to stay the same. But, once again, this is what I'm getting at. Whether it's this knife, whether it's this knife, or whether it's this knife, okay? 
these knives are made for true operators Navy SEALs and EOD Master Crabs in my opinion this knife in my opinion this knife the Benchmade model 162-1 EOD Bushcrafter was not made for the EOD service I'm calling Les Deasis the owner of Benchmade out I'm calling Shane Siebert the designer of the EOD Bushcrafter I'm calling you out as well show me show the public prove to me prove to the public that your knife is being endorsed and being used by real Navy operators or stop making knives and stop spinning such bullshit in your catalogs prove it to me and I'll back off I love Benchmade knives most of my everyday carries are Benchmade knives some cold steel but basically I carry a lot of Benchmade in my pocket and I love your knives Les don't get me wrong you and I know each other alright I love your knives but I'm calling bullshit on this one okay I'm calling bullshit on you pushing it as an EOD knife and I'm calling on Shane Siebert I'm calling bullshit on him pushing it as an EOD knife I know better I know better because I have the proof right here right here and right here of knives being made for the EODs okay for the explosive ordnance disposal technicians all in all there it is guys six knives being called bushcraft okay six knives that's a lot of knives in one video hm, I'm gonna have to try this again I want to thank you for stopping by I hope you like my review please share it with all the knife heads out there and I'll see you on the next video take care